speed. Let's have a look at that. The mesh filter is completely blocked. And to be quite honest, when you get that number of things going wrong, it's the sort of day you should really go back in and just forget about it. commented in our last video that we need to recalibrate some of our instruments so we've come out here today to do it. Uh, we're going to do the mast head instrument and we're going to just make sure we're going to recalibrate our autopilot. I don't think she really needs it but we're here we'll do it today then it's done. Look at you. so how do you do that? For the autopilot all we do is put her into calibration mode and then we drive her around in circles two or three times until she says she's calibrated she'll tell us when she's done it. For this there are some settings that we do by pressing various buttons and we need to look that up and we have a manual over there ready to do it. For the particular instrument in question, we go straight to the wind, press calibrate and it lines itself up with the wind. Right, well let's get on with it then, shall we? Alright, let's do it. See if I can remember how to do Annie. Right, she's got to go back into standby. Select, track, out. No, it's not that. <laughs> but do you know how long it's been since I've done this? Obviously two years. Bar settings, I don't know, to make a search. Nope, not that. This is going to take a while. Yeah, I think I'll stop here then. <laughs> I would. I started the uh, calibration. I've dug my way through Raymarine's menus and I've finally found out where it is. So now I've just got to drive around in circles for a bit and tell me, until the autopilot tells me that she's uh, recalibrated herself. I'm sorry for not looking at the camera, but there are boats and all sorts of things around me and the wind has picked up rather spectacularly. So I'm paying attention to the boat. Well, these two together? Yeah, for two seconds. Calibrating. And Do then... I have to press anything else? Right, have you got the word cal on? Yes. No, you haven't. Well, not my fault you went away. Sorry. <laughs> Oh, okay, let me get lined up again. There. Two seconds. Yes. Now, nothing seems to happen. Do I need to press anything else? Right, okay. So why are we still going around in circles there? Well, we think we sorted out the wind instrument, which was good, because we had a moment of disaster where we had no instruments. Uh, <laughs> or at least no instruments that were working as they should do. But. It's currently 4.6 gusting 7. We could sail this and if we were out at sea and it came up like this we'd just carry on but the harbour's only over there and we don't have to sail in this stuff so why bother? So as soon as we get uh, the autopilot recalibrated we're just going to go back in. I mean we're just going round in circles today though aren't we? We are going round in circles and there was a horrible moment where the autopilot wasn't calibrated, the wind instruments were screwed up and the halyard was wrapped around the upper shrider. Upper shride. And to be quite honest, when you get that number of things going wrong, it's the sort of day you should really go back in and just forget about it. Get your head down, come out tomorrow, the weather might be nicer and you might be brighter. Who knows? <laughs> We're certainly but, not bright and breezy at the moment, are we, Beth? <laughs> uh, the sun's bright, the wind's breezy, but I don't think any of that applies to you and me. <laughs> well, Bev and I did absolutely loads and loads of going round in circles. We've got... Um, some really nice cute circles and some bigger circles but at the end of the day the track looks like a complete and utter mess um, just trying to calibrate all the instruments but Annie um, as you can see here is still not calibrated correctly um, basically it goes all the way up to um, a line and the line isn't fully complete um, but we did so many circles but what we reckon it is is the fact that um, we were bouncing around and uh, maybe she just wasn't um, you know she might need it to be smoother because the last time we um, calibrated it the the sea state was very smooth whereas this time it was quite bouncy and uh, she's just not calibrated but if you can give us any ideas then that would be great because um, obviously um, calibrating your instruments is important but luckily we managed to do um, 
the wind instrument, so um, that is uh, much better now. Poor Bev. What are you doing, Bev, behind all that hair? <laughs> the toilet. Um, we've had a bit of calcium build-up in it, as you can see, and um, anybody need some calcium, let me know. I've got plenty of it to spare. Um, and your battery's just gone down for the 15%. <laughs> It's not actually as bad as a job as people make it out to be and as we've had it before. I thoroughly flushed the system the other day. I put some water purifier into it and cleaned it out and there's actually very, very little smell in here. And the deposits you see are actually all calcium. They're all hard calcium. This is not poop. This is basically rock that is condensed out of seawater caused by a reaction with urine. Um, it's coated the valves on the inside and things like that, and I'm just taking it off, and it's busy just coming off with it. Like Can that. I actually see a bit more of that rather than just your back of your head? <sighs> Look, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm trying to work here, you know. I'm not, I'm, <laughs> I'm not being photogenic for cameras, all right? <laughs> I know, but this is just what boat life is like, isn't it? It ben? is, but like I say, people make this out to be the most horrendous job in the boat. It's not actually that bad if you prepare for it a, a little bit in advance which is what we've done here. Right, so this is the old joker valve and unlike the previous owner, we're not keeping this one because we have spares and we will be ordering a new spare up to replace the one I've just put in. We do not at this point have a spare base gasket, but this cleans up very easily. This stuff scrapes off very, very easily. So we'll clean this up, put it away, order one up. And when the order comes, this one can go and we'll have a spare. Yay. Like the word spare. I like the word spare. So I'll scrape the calcium off this because this is actually, there's no poop in the thing. We've been living in the marinas for the last eight months. We poop at the marina. We do not poop down the toilet. This is just seawater calcium. That's all this is. That's better. Wow. That is amazing stuff. It's hard as rock. Okay, so I'll see if well, I can. It is a rock, isn't it? Well, it is. Just there we are and I'll see if I can just... Uh... And this is the same gasket cleaned up. Well, this is the filter from the shower drain and I was wondering why it wasn't draining very well and I think I might have the answer. Eww! Let's have a look at that. The mesh filter is completely blocked. Oh yeah. So I'll see what I can do. Absolutely. Because this is something I do not have a spare for. No we don't do we? That's completely blocked. Yeah. Well, it's a little mesh filter which collects uh, shower hair and it seems to be very, very good at it. On the plus side, it seems to be quite easy to clean if you're careful with it. That's not looking too bad, actually. There's a, something to clean. Yeah, sure. There, it's already better than it was. Definitely. Um, but we don't have a spare for that. But luckily, because it's so easy to clean, it's not going to be too bad. Hopefully. And then that goes... That goes in there under that little rubber gasket. And I was wondering why the shower wasn't draining quickly, and now I've got my answer. So now what's it sound like, Bev? Well, never mind what it sounds like. Let's fill it up. Right, okay, so well, she's definitely starting to uh, fill up the uh, wet locker. Okay, so... I don't know if you can see the hose over there or not. If you watch it, you see the water going out? There it goes, look. Oh, yes. Oh, it's actually moving now. <laughs> It's a throbbing, vibrating thing. <laughs> oh, Beverly, oh my lord. Beverly, stop that out there. <laughs> <laughs> but at least it's draining now. Happy days. Yeah, happy days. Shove it in there and get rid of it. Yeah. Right, to finish off the job we started the other day, the calibration. Uh, we never got the autopilot calibrated, so we've come back out to do the job. And I'm just keeping an eye out because we've got a boy over there. We've got a ship over there. And... Um, it's a much calmer day, isn't it? It's ben? a much calmer day today, so we're, we're just going. We're not gonna... bouncing, are we? We're not bouncing around, so we're just going to get this done. I think we should move the sewing machine from right underneath the flux compass. That's probably a very good move. Same here. We've tried everything. We've moved. We've moved things around in the lockers. We've done all sorts of things, but it seems the big thing for getting this autopilot to calibrate is doing more than three knots. So we're doing big, lazy, slow circles, and there's a boy out here I'm trying to keep an eye on. 
uh, at more than three knots and, and finally it looks like it's starting to calibrate. Woohoo! <laughs> oh look at that! Oh! Red again! It'll go blue again, you'll see. It's definitely bigger red. Oh, a blue again! <laughs> red again. It's just taken us ages. Oh, thanks <laughs> for that. <laughs> All I can boop say is boop, thank boop for boop that. <laughs> so buy your own boop. Oh, it does. oh, God. Well, there's two not to win, so we're not sailing, so it's time to turn about and go in and get a nice cuppa. Yeah, but at least the autopilot is fine. Calibrated! Hey! Oh, where's Carrie? Hello? <laughs> <laughs> it's over there. So then, we're back in port. Um, Absolutely shattered. The autopilot's recalibrated. Hip hip hooray. Uh, apparently three is the magic number. So if you're doing a Raymarine autopilot recalibration, don't try it under three knots. Basically, yeah, because we were just, na it said sort of like we'd read somewhere that it does nice slow circles. So we're doing nice slow circles or maybe about a knot, something like that. No, three knots apparently is so circles. Well, you think about it, a lot of uh, marine craft do go, qu do go quicker than... Yeah, because um, normally you'd be talking about a power boat or something like that. And, um, you know, obviously with a sailboat, that's half our speed. <laughs> is that a glass of red wine I see in your hand? Yes, because we're going to treat ourselves to steak and chips because we've got that sorted. Um... Our plans to go over to Liverpool are just not going to happen. Uh, so we are making other plans, new plans, because we are allowed to do some stuff. But I'm afraid to say this year is going to be more about the Yacht Master and just getting the extra miles. We're not going to be travelling to exotic places particularly. Well, well we can try. We'll try our best. But as long as we get our 600 miles and do all the exercises for the Upmaster. So this lovely steak that you're having, where's that coming from? Oh, it's called the supermarket. <laughs> I mean, who's cooking it? Oh, Bev's cooking it, because uh, Bev's the great cook. The galley slave strikes. She does. She's an absolutely fantastic cook. But uh, if you want to watch Bev cooking, it's Bev Cook's door. And every now and then I, 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 I come out of hibernation. <laughs> yeah. Go on, bottoms up. Yeah. You've got to say, that steak looks absolutely fantastic, but I deserve it. Well, we deserve it. Are you going to give me some of it then? No, you've got your own. <laughs>